given to us. Um, we don't have to uh, do a lot of training, although uh, some of us do. Um, and once we get the paddle going, we get our rhythm, uh, there's no stopping. When I'm on the waka, we all won. There's a good bond, uh, everybody shares the load, shares the experience, and uh, yeah, we just get out there and do it. Before 1769, no European had set foot in New Zealand. That all changed with the arrival of the Endeavour, the British ship commanded by Captain James Cook. Today, New Zealand has absorbed waves of immigration, helping it to become a prosperous nation with a high standard of living. But for the original inhabitants of these lands, the Maori, it's not always been easy. Maoris have sometimes struggled to maintain their cultural traditions. New Zealand's national identity has been shaped by an array of influences, and the challenge has been to ensure that the Maori contribution remains central. Waka Ama, or outrigger canoe racing, has propelled Maori culture into the sporting mainstream here. Popular with Maoris, the sport also welcomes pakaha, the Maori term for those New Zealanders of foreign ancestry. Any culture, Maori, pakaha, whatever, whatever your culture and you want to take part in the sport, it's there for you. And you're welcomed with open arms. Maihana is the chairman of the Wakaama Club in Mount Monganui that has organized this day of racing. It's a chance for local companies to put together a team of novices and try out the sport. Wakaama is physically demanding, as one paddler recalls from his first experience. I couldn't straighten my arms. I went out to the 200 meter, 250 meter sprint and I uh, came back, I handed back the paddle and I found I couldn't straighten my arms and uh, I was hooked from there. Wakaama is the local form of something that exists right across the Pacific. It's the legacy of ancient Polynesians, who were the ancestors of the Maori. These early Polynesians populated a massive area of the Pacific Ocean, stretching from New Zealand to Hawaii. They explored huge distances using ocean-going canoes, as one Maori elder describes. They travelled by the stars and by the moon, and uh, they knew where they were going, and they knew how the birds, you know, if the birds were flying, they knew where they were going, how the migrating birds, and uh, what time of year they flew in different directions, and what time of year they came back. <laughs> As New Zealand lies so far south, the ancient Polynesians reached it last, perhaps 800 years ago. Centuries before then, some voyagers had reached the Hawaiian island chain. Today, in Hawaii, outrigger canoe racing also continues. The most famous event is the daunting 41-mile charge between the islands of Molokai and Oahu. Back in New Zealand, the corporate races haven't been quite as demanding, but the evening social function is welcome nonetheless. The meal takes place on local Maori land. New Zealanders are engaged in an ongoing debate to try and reconcile differences between Maori people and the nation's other communities. For its part, this one small event brings different social groups together. The next day sees another race, this time for more serious paddlers. Proceedings start with the traditional Maori welcoming speech. The competing crews must collect markers from a local Maori marae or spiritual meeting ground before heading back along the harbour. It's 10 kilometres in total and the best teams will cover the distance in less than 50 minutes. Everybody uh, is in timing. The timing's correct. Yeah, it just feels good. You can feel it, it just glides along. And then if the call of course for more power, and we dig it in and you can feel it, it just lifts and glides again. And then we'll change the stroke back to a longer stroke and cruise, still keeping the power on.
The wooden canoes that once carried the Polynesians over the Pacific were very different to these modern fiberglass vessels. The largest held over 100 people and would sometimes be at sea for months at a time. To this day, different Maori groups trace their arrival to specific ancestral canoes. In the last 15 years, Waka'ama has grown considerably in popularity. It's grueling but also low impact and allows entire families to participate. But perhaps more importantly, it offers New Zealanders of every background an opportunity to share in an aspect of Maori culture. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get to the stage where it's probably going to be on a par with rugby. And I say that with all seriousness, because uh, that's where I see it heading.